I quietly made my way to the vault where my parents hid the money. I needed some new clothes to go to the club. I even took a gold key shaped pendant from my mom's jewelry box to look my best. I went in, but there was a glittering emptiness waiting for me inside. It was strange, but everything here used to be littered with money. I even had to jump up to see if there was anything left on the top shelf, and suddenly something creaked under my foot. Then the floor abruptly parted, and I fell into the dark hole. Uh, it hurts. I landed badly on something hard, but it seemed I was intact. Where was I? I took out my phone, but there was no connection. Then I turned on the flashlight and froze from what I saw. This was some kind of dungeon, judging by the size, almost an underground city. There were gilded statues everywhere and mountains of gold bars were scattered right on the floor. Yes, my parents of course were rich, but not so rich. No, it looked more like some pharaonic tombs or abandoned treasure troves. My mom and dad worked in the city hall, and at school, they kept whispering that my family was stealing money from the budget. But I didn't believe the rumors. Parents were just well paid. I always stood for them. So none of the kids at school hung out with me because of it. Well, I didn't care. No friends, but I had money. But things wasn't so smooth with money lately either. Dad disappeared a month ago and according to my mom, took all our savings with him. My mother repeated sadly, how could he do this to us? And now I fell into some damned underground palace. And where was all this from? I wondered if my parents knew about this. And then I heard a rustle. I whirled around and shone my flashlight. Who's there? I listened. Everything was quiet. I thought I heard something. And suddenly a wild, thin guy ran out of the darkness and immediately rushed at me. I screamed in terror and ran. I ran, shining my flashlight on the way, but quickly tripped over a gold bar and flew into the wall. I turned around. The guy was already very close. I squeezed my eyes shut in fear. He was going to kill me. But suddenly he took me by the elbow. Are you hurt? He asked. Then he apologized and said he wouldn't hurt me. But I pushed him away. Who are you? The guy's name was Sam. He said he had been here for over a week. Yeah, he didn't look so good. And then I asked how he even survived here. Sam said that here he could drink water running down from the pipes and eat cockroaches. <laughs> I stopped and looked around for a way out. I am not going to stay here, I told the guy. But Sam said sadly that there was no way out. Stop! How did such a ragamuffin even end up in my house? More precisely, under the house. Sam said that he came to us because his mom needed an expensive surgery. They had no money. And my dad, according to rumors, used to willingly help the poor. But there was no one at home. And just as he was about to leave, he heard screams and groans from somewhere in the depths. The door was unlocked, and Sam followed the cry into the house and fell through. Yes, my mom always called at my dad for this unhealthy craving to give away our money to everyone. But I wasn't up to it now. I looked up where it come from. Then I saw that the trap door through which I had fallen was ajar. Yes! I decided to collect the gold bars in High Pyramid and climb up. Sam, why are you standing there? Can you help me? But he kept looking around and telling me that I had to be quiet or the monster would hear us. Yeah, monsters, of course. Did pharaohs run through here by any chance? Sam, you're starving out of your mind. I waved it off and continued working. Soon I finished my pyramid and climbed up to the trapdoor. But the bars were slippery and were moving apart. When I reached the ceiling, I tried to push the trapdoor aside. Come on! But when the trapdoor began to give way, the bars under my feet parted, and I fell down with a crash, and the trapdoor slammed shut over my head. Ah! No! Suddenly a moaning came out of the darkness, and then I heard a sound, like a door slamming somewhere in the back. But Sam, terrified, grabbed me and dragged me behind a pile of gold. What are you doing? We have to run to that door. And then Sam started pointing with a shaking hand. I peered carefully from cover and saw a figure in the dark. It was approaching us. Sam whispered that this was the monster, and if he finds us, we were finished. I was very scared. I tried not to move. And suddenly the monster let out a brutal roar and bent down to us. The light from my flashlight lit up his emaciated face. It was Dad. What's going on? 
I dropped my phone in shock, and Dad immediately rushed to me. Dad, what are you doing? It's me. But my dad didn't seem to recognize me. Out of fear, Sam and I ran in different directions. I had never been so scared. Suddenly, I heard something fall in the distance. Dad rushed over. Sam immediately ran up to me. He threw something and distracted Dad with it. I quickly led him to the room where Dad had come out. Come on, Sam. There's a place to hide. We ran in and slammed the door. Heck, there was no lock. Then Sam leaned back against the door. My legs were still shaking, and I couldn't believe that my dad had left my mom and me and stayed here, surrounded by all this gold. But why? I looked around. The small room was filled with construction junk, and then I saw a strip of light under one of the cabinets. Hey Sam, what's this? The cabinet was very heavy, and I only moved it halfway. But it was enough to see the tunnel, at the end of which there was a light. This is the way out, Sam, I whispered with hope. Sam came over to me, but then the door burst open and Dad came rushing in. His face was horribly contorted with anger. Oh no, there was no time to think, and I struggled inside. Sam followed. Faster! Dad almost grabbed yeah. Sam's leg, but Sam managed to dodge. I crawled forward, tears rolling down my face. The tunnel was too narrow for my dad to catch up with us, but the lack of air made me dizzy. I was suffocating. Gradually, the tunnel became wider and it became easier to breathe. There was a grate at the end, and there was a lock on it. Really, it was all for nothing. I was in despair. Freedom was so close. Out of desperation, I turned to Sam and wept silently. My dad was almost upon us, but Sam was staring at my neck and pointed his finger on the pendant. In the shape of a key. Sam, it's just a necklace I stole from my mom today. But then Sam asked me to try to unlock the lock with it. He thought it was a key. What nonsense. But there was nowhere to go. And I decided to try. I took the key from around my neck and reached through the bars. My palms were sweating with excitement and I dropped the key. No, my dad was very close now. And I could hear him breathing. We were finished. Then Sam crawled forward pressed himself against the bars, and reached for the key with the last of his strength. Come on! Finally, he picked it up and quickly turned the key in the lock. We got out into the backyard. I quickly closed the grate and Sam snapped the lock. Dad couldn't reach us here. I was overcome with emotion, and I hugged Sam tightly. If it wasn't for his ingenuity, we would have ended up eating cockroaches among the piles of gold. But Sam said he had to go home right away. He hadn't seen his mother in so many days, and he was afraid something had happened to her. I remember that his mother was seriously ill, but why didn't he take at least a piece of gold? Sam proudly said that being poor didn't give him the right to steal, so noble. At parting, I told Sam to come visit. He nodded and quickly disappeared. I was so ashamed. For the sake of some party, I wanted to steal from my own parents, and I found my dad. I needed to tell my mom about this as soon as possible. As soon as I ran home, I hugged my mom tightly and confusedly told her about everything that I had just experienced. We need to call the police, mom. But to this, my mother coldly replied that it was none of my business. What? Then my mom grabbed me roughly by the arm. Mom, what's going on? Let go of my hand. I'm in pain. She dragged me somewhere, took the tape, and began to wrap it around my hands. I tried to pull away. Mom, what are you doing? My mom was silent and looked into my eyes and continued. Then she nervously shouted that in her family, only she cared about the future. And we were all selfish. After that, she added in a whisper, go to your crazy daddy. And just as she opened the trap door, someone jumped on her from behind it. It was Sam. She fell down and Sam helped me free myself. We ran out of the house and stopped on the street to catch her breath. But Sam, where did you come from? Sam said he forgot to give me my key. So he came back. Thank you, Sam. You saved me. But he smiled and said that I was the first to save him. Now we were even. At that moment, we heard mom screams from the dungeon. I couldn't believe my own mother tried to kill me and my dad. The money clouded her mind. The realization brought tears to my eyes. Sam put his arm around me and we sat there for a long time. An hour later, I called the police. I told the cops everything. And then I watched my mom get taken to the station. My heart was breaking. But what else could I do? 
The cops released my dad and took him to the hospital. Because of exhaustion, he completely lost his nerves. But soon he recovered and returned home. I was so happy. But my mom was less lucky. She was diagnosed with psychosis and sent for long-term treatment, after which a prison sentence was waiting for her. When my dad recovered, he said that my mother had been stealing money from the budget for many years. This money had ruined her so much that she seemed to have gone mad and even started building an underground city under her house. My dad wanted her to return all the money, but my mom was against it. We turned the gold over to the police, but some of it was saved for Sam's mom. Sam was so happy. A few days later, my dad and I were cleaning up our dungeon when my dad called me and showed bars stuck in the wall. It was strange that we didn't notice them earlier. We looked at each other and suddenly... Dad suggested building a free underground entertainment center for children. There's so much space here. I was so excited. Cool idea, Dad. Since then, I've learned that money isn't the most important thing. And they also need to be shared with those who really need money. Now every day, happy children come to our house. And I finally have a real friend, Sam. And I know for a fact that money can't buy that kind of friendship. Did you like the video? Subscribe and like it. Support the channel. Thank you.